Okay, so we have a surprise bonus round of vocabularising with Anne and the original Jane. Um, as unfortunately the session that was planned to go ahead at 2pm UK time obviously is not currently going ahead. You will have seen the cancellation email. Um, but original Jane is stepping into the breach. Uh, we had prepared this as a little something in our pocket. Um, so this is the bonus round um, and I will hand over to Jane to run you through how it's going to go today. All right. Hello, dear friends, and welcome. Other Jane is a very hard act to follow, and this is going to be very lightweight compared to her presentation. But as fate would have it, we do get to play an extra bonus round of vocabularizing with Anne, the Anne Lister's dictionary game that pits your vocabulary skills against Anne Lister's. I'm your MC, and I'll be doing all the easy parts while my lovely assistant, Alex, of the fabulous Summit Squad takes care of the tricky bits. We're delighted you could join us for this bonus round, and we hope you'll have a terrific time playing our game. In case anyone hasn't played before, here's how it works. I'll give you a word used by Ann Lister somewhere in her journals, travel journals, or letters. We'll show you four possible meanings for the word, each with an example, real or made up, of how Ann used or didn't really use the word. You'll try to figure out the correct meaning of the word as Anne used it, and you'll get points if you choose the right definition. If you're our big winner, you'll soon be the owner of your very own Summit Carabiner. That's how it works. Now Alex will explain how you can play. Okay, so I can see that some of you have already found your way to Mentimeter. I can see the hearts arriving, so I'm very grateful for the hearts. Um, if you haven't played yet this weekend, I will run through it. If you just want a refresh, I will also run through it. Um, but basically, we are using a free online tool called Mentimeter. Um, and to play, you either need to open a new browser window on whatever device you're using to watch right now, um, or if you have a mobile handy, perhaps you were using it um, in Jane, artist Jane's session, um, you can use it for this as well. Um, once you have that device or that new browser window, go to menti.com, the address that is on the screen right now. Once there, input the number displayed to join the game. Um, alternatively, if you have a mobile device and you have been used to scanning QR codes already this morning, um, you can use your, um, your camera to scan that QR code again, and that will take you straight to the game. Once you get there, you will be on a holding screen as we introduce our slides. You can watch the presentation either on Zoom or in your browser, but when the time comes to vote, you will have to vote using your device. Um, I, I, if it seems too confusing, um, that's fine, don't worry, you can still play along with outvoting. The only difference is that you won't have a chance to win a Summit Carabiner, and we won't have a chance to see how amazing your knowledge is, and we'll have to take your word for it. Back over to Jane. All righty, are you ready? Because here we go. Our first word is Latinity, L-A-T-I-N-I-T-Y. Which of the following is its meaning? Is it A? a prayer consisting of a series of invocations, each followed by the same response, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Sunday, January 7th, 1827, in Paris. At 12, 25, 60, into the salon to read prayers, read the epistle and gospel, but left out the latinity and read no sermon, wishing to go to Key Voltaire to ask Mrs. Barlow to come and dine with us. Or is it B, facility in the use of Latin, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Saturday, June 9th, 1821. I mean to begin writing out either some of, some of the one or the other of Cicero's orations and his letters to Atticus for the sake of Latinity, and I'm in doubt as to which to choose. Or is it C, the state of existing but not yet being developed or manifest, as used by Anne in her journal entry of Saturday, August 4th, 1821. A few minutes conversation with Steph before breakfast mentioned Mariana and my suspicion of venereal. He said he was treating her as, as for this and suspected it. I hinted that under some principle of latinity, the disease might have broken out in Charles. He answered no, but it might or must be some late imprudence. Or is it D, 
the amount of salt contained in a liquid or other substance, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Saturday, April 8, 1837, after she had injured her eye while planting thorns at Shibden. Mr. Jubb came about 11 just after my breakfast, forced the eye open, made up with leech stoppings, much better, but to take two more pills tonight and the high latinity mixture every three hours as before. So which of these four do you think the real meaning of latinity is? Get ready to make your choice now. Okay, so as before, you will be assigned at random a small icon, a lion, a football, any of the above. And if you haven't played before, you may also have the option to um, input a name. That is a name that will show up on the leaderboard. Um, I do see, I think Puffy is indeed in the house again. So um, it looks to be another, another highly contested game. Um, I will start a countdown now, and you will have um, about five seconds before you have to vote. Correct answers get points, but fastest correct answer gets even more points. Um, so ready, go. Twenty vote, twenty-two, twenty-six players. Who's right? Ah, oh, look at that! It looks like almost everyone knows the word latinity. You people and your superior language skills—you you never cease to amaze. Let's go see, though. Did you get it right? The correct answer was B, latinity, facility in the use of Latin. That repetitive prayer is a litany, being real but not manifest is latency, and saltiness is salinity. I have a little rhyme for these words. <clears throat> it's called something my Latin teacher, Sister Mary Angelica, once said. Here's how it goes. If you think Latin class is for the birds, you need to know this about latinity. It can also help you with English words like litany, latency, and salinity. And now let's check the leaderboard and see who's ahead. <clears throat> I see the Puffy family are in, again, very good, real, real near the top. Kat is also doing well. Kirsten is up there. And Bran the Broken, who was another top, I think Bran Broken was our winner yesterday. So we've got um, some repeat players here. Um, although I will say this game is even more bonus because today's rounds have five questions. So um, if you haven't scored well, you have um, even more questions to, uh, to get yourself ahead. All righty. <clears throat> Let's go on to word two then, which is gibbet, G-I-B-B-E-T. Which of the following is its meaning? Is it A, of an animal to stop short and refuse to go forwards? as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Thursday, September 17th, 1835. Came in about four and a half, dressed for riding, and off on Anne's pony at 450 to Cliff Hill. A sad fight with the animal who repeatedly gibbeted almost all the way, but particularly in Water Lane. At Cliff Hill in 25 minutes and stayed there a half hour. Agreeableized and talked much to Captain Sutherland. Mrs. Ann Walker and Ann scarcely uttered. In returning, the pony had had enough of fighting and came back very tolerably. <clears throat> or is it B, a wooden structure resembling a gallows from which the bodies of executed criminals were hung to public view, as mentioned by Ann in her journal entry of Friday, August 31st, 1822. Between Woolwich and Greenwich, close to the river on our left, Opposite to Blackwall, three gibbets standing at a little distance from each other, the first showing remains of one man, the others the remains of two men each. They were Malays, sailors, executed perhaps eight or 10 years ago for murdering their captain. <clears throat> or is it C, rapid, incomprehensible nonsense talk, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Tuesday, November 10th, 1818 at York. At three, Ellen and I walked along the riverside. Rain came on and we got a little wet. 
dined at Mr. Mather's about one and a half miles off, Miss Hotham enough to wear a saint to death with her perpetual gibbet? Or is it D, the gizzard, liver, heart, or neck of a fowl? as mentioned by Anne in her journal entry of Thursday, July 25th, 1825. Sat down to dinner at eight and a half, gibbet soup, excellent veal cutlets, potatoes, peas, currant tart, and a bottle of port wine. My aunt better, and I felt as usual again today and have enjoyed my dinner. <clears throat> so which of these four do you think is the real meaning of gibbet? Get ready to make your choice. Okay, as before, fingers on buzzers. <laughs> what? Okay. Almost everybody got this one right. If you did, all together, reach around and give yourself a pat on the back. Good for you. Now let's go see what the other words were. All righty, did you get it right? Uh, the gibbet, of course, is a gallows with bodies hanging on it. An animal might jib. Nonsense talk is gibberish. And chicken guts are giblets. As it happens, I do have a rhyme about these words. It's called, what to do if. Here's how it goes. If you wanna hear gibberish, find a baby in a crib. If you wanna go riding, get a horse that won't jib. If you wanna make gravy, go shop for a giblet, a giblet. If you wanna be horrified, go look at a gibbet. And now let's check the leaderboard and see what the puffies are doing. I think the real battle here could be between Mrs. Puffy and Puffy. I don't want to call it domestic. These Puffy they are, they're tight at the top. <laughs> they need to go on TV with these vocabulary skills. That's all I can say. Oh, they're doing well, weirdly. We have a tie at the top. We've got Cat and Puffy both Ooh. in number top position here. Um, and I did hear that Cat was also Lay Moustache last night, and Lay Moustache also did well. So um, ah. it's it good. But it is tight. Like we've never, I've never seen a draw on this before. It is, um, it's very tight. Um, well, I knew Cat was going to do well because in our run-throughs she was dominant. But anyway, it's not over yet. Still three words to go. Let's go on. And the next word is costed, C-O-S-T-I-V-E. -E. Which of the following is its meaning? <clears throat> is it A, constipated? as used by Anne in her journal entry of Friday, August 30th, 1822, on her way to Paris with her father and Marion. Our steam packet has 60 horsepower and is a fine vessel, I think very comfortably fitted up, a first and aft cabin, the latter for the ladies to retire to if they choose, and I am quite settled and at ease, except that my bowels are generally costive when I begin to travel, and this is the third morning I've done no good. Or is it B, of great price or value, expensive, as used by Anne in her journal entry of March 10th, 1830. Came to my room at 1040, then wrote one and a half page to Mariana on her putting little Mariana into a cost of school and seeming to take the responsibility of educating her upon herself against this should be careful not to give rise to greater expectations than it may be in her power to realize, but impossible for me in this case to judge half as well as she can. Or is it C, a substance capable of burning or corroding by chemical action, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Saturday, June 23rd, 1821. A letter from Isabella Norcliffe, Miss Valence's white terrier, Braun, has been bit by a dog said to be mad, but the former is kept up, has had the, wood, the wound burnt out with costives and is taking mercurial pills. Or is it D, producing an effect, as used by Anne in her journal entry of Saturday, June 23rd, 1826. My bowels right this morning, 
as good or good or better motion than yesterday. Yesterday and Thursday, I had my stays quite loose and had not that heavy pain at the pit of my stomach. I'm now almost convinced that too tight dressing has been solely costive of all this disorder, this obstinacy in my bowels and pain at the pit of my stomach, though other people would have thought my things quite loose. And which of the four do you think is the real meaning of costive? Get ready to make your choice. <clears throat> okay, as before, kind time begins. Have a quick vote this time. Ah. Well, it looks like there's at least a little bit of a split this time. I think most of you still got it right, but a few people were tripped up by this one. So I'm feeling good about this question. Let's go see what the rest of the words were. And not surprisingly, just as the Inuits are said to have had 50 different words for snow, Ann Lister has more than a few for constipated, and that's what costive means. Something pricey is costly, Something corrosive is caustic, and something that produces an effect is causative. I just happen to have a little rhyme for these words. It's called how Ann Lister would explain them. Here's how it goes. Costly means that it's very expensive. Caustic, that it's probably strong. Causative means it's conducive. Caustive, that your bowels are all wrong. And now let's take a look at the leaderboard. Puffy is right again, but Kat has fallen down on this one. Mrs. Puffy's also doing well. So again, we have we have a Puffy double double platforming at the top here. Charlotte is moving on up though. Charlotte, I don't think I've seen you in the top three before, so good work. And um, I also see in the chat that Kirsten is having um, some technical difficulties. Um, Kirsten, we do have some good news for you. Um, we have a booby prize if, if uh, Mentimeter kicks you out. Um, you can drop us an email to the winner's email address and you will also get a, a special gift in the, uh, in, in the post at some stage whenever we've recovered from the summit. Um, so don't worry, Kirsten, um, by getting kicked out, you have inadvertently won the prize <laughs> for getting kicked out. Um, okay. Don't all be getting kicked out now. <laughs> All righty, though, we're uh, now ready to move on to word four, which is WISP, W-I-S-P. Which of the following is its meaning? Is it A, a winged insect with a narrow waist and a sting, which raises its young in a paper nest made from wood pulp, as referred to by Anne in her travel journal entry of Thursday, September 26th, 1839, in St. Petersburg, Russia. From there to the Museum of the Academy of Arts and Sciences at one, a splendid collection of natural history, reptiles, mollusks, birds, eggs, some stuffed animals, a giant mammoth skeleton found in Siberia, a wisp nest three feet long attached to a birch branch, hurried through the rooms because obliged to come away at two, see this museum again. Or is it B? to groom a horse with a small bundle of hay or straw, as mentioned by Anne in her journal entry of Monday, August 4th, 1823. Except for 10 minutes in the stable from six to seven and 35 sixtieths, John here at six, George not in the stable till six and 10 sixtieths, saw him wisp dress Caradoc a full hour. Or is it C, a type of hinged metal fastener that can be used to secure a door or window as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Friday, March 17th, 1837 at Shibden. John called us at 540 saying there had been somebody in the house. Anne and I jumped up, but on hearing that nothing seemed to be gone, I got into bed again and lay very quietly, leaving Anne to inquire and tell me the news. John heard something and got up about five and a half, just before which Cookson awoke, hearing them trying to unscrew the wisp of her room door lock and called out, and this perhaps frightened them away. Or is it D, the articulation of S 
like or nearly like the TH sound, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Sunday, August 4th, 1822, hastened to Mrs. Veach's, past the two Mrs. Gorse just before the entrance gate. The elder, Miss Mary, a chatty, pleasant girl enough that seemed to talk herself pretty. The younger, a totus 17, Dorothy, very pretty, very fine complexion, and a very little wisp, apparently a nice, good-humored girl and talkative too, as far as her sister left her the opportunity. So which of the four do you think is the real meaning of wisp? Get ready to make your choice now. Okay, fingers on buzzers again. Well, uh, you guys are distressingly consistent in your fabulousness. What a literate and knowledgeable group. And it, it's an honor to be associated with you. Let's go see what the other choices were. As you now know, you wisp a horse. That insect is a wasp. The fastener is a hasp. And the speech problem is a lisp. I have a little rhyme for these words. It's called, when I would thick. Here's how it goes. Wathp, hathp, and withp were all hard to say with my lithp. And now let's check the leaderboard. Look at those puffies, honesty. I feel like we're going to have to give the puffies like, like a handicap. Or something. I know. They, they automatically lose 100 points because they're just what so are good. They, a couple of linguists or what? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so the, the puffies are indeed still dominating it. It's like they're like one of those Olympian couples where they're always on the, on the platform together or something. Um, Charlotte is also keeping up. Um, and yeah, Kat, who's, Kat, who's still holding on and was fastest in this one, is, is, um, but she did send me a message being like, oh, it was it was my phone. It was it was a technical problem. So um, I think Cat Cat's just not wanting to admit that she did get the last question wrong. Um, but yeah, look, looking looking tight at the top again. Um, only really about what 30, 40 um, points in it. Oh, there no. apparently there is a linguist in the puffy household, so that might explain a lot. I don't know if that's a dictionary in the puffy household as well, Benny Chess. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was wondering. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, we shouldn't be so suspicious. You know, if the puffies are that good, they're that good. Way to go, puffies. We're, we're proud of you. And now on to our fifth and final word of our bonus round, which is curricle, C-U-R-R-I-C-L-E. Which of the following is its meaning? Is it A, an intricate ornamental curl or twist, as referred to by Anne in her travel journal entry of Thursday, September 29th, 1831, while touring Southern England. The windows at Lulworth, all plain and oblong, single or double, and lacking in all ornamentation, without even so much as a curricle and no attempt at Gothic or castle style. Or is it B, dead or hardened skin, especially that around the base of a fingernail or toenail, as mentioned by Anne in her journal entry of Friday, August 3rd, 1821, while visiting the Belcombs at Newcastle returned for the children to take them to a shop and buy them some gloves. Near an hour washing Rose's hands, cleaning her curricles and cutting her nails in Mrs. Steph's bedroom, she looking on. Or is it C, a folding seat with curved legs and no back, used in ancient Rome as a symbol of political or military power, as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of Friday, August 16th, 1839, while traveling in Sweden. Anne sketched one of the chairs, a curricle such as we saw at Avignon. Common in Norway? Reminds me of my idea of the old Romans being of Norse or Gothic origin. Or is it D, a two-wheeled open carriage drawn by two horses side by side, 
as referred to by Anne in her journal entry of August 23rd, 1823, after a long talk with her friend, Miss Pickford. Miss Threlfall is in no immediate danger, but the spine is injured above and below, thrown out of a curricle. So which of the four do you think is the true meaning of curricle? Get ready to make your choice. Okay, it's your last chance to show us what you know. Ah, a little more diversity of uh, uh, answer choices this time, which thrills me to my marrow, I want to say. But, you know, still more people got it right than wrong. But even a little bit of a split makes me happy at this point. I didn't, I didn't stump the band yet on, on anything, but this, one, this one's making me happy. I think we're going to have to make it even more difficult next year. I, think I know. To, like advanced level. I know, exactly. Did you get it right? The curricle is D, a carriage. An ornamental twist is a curly Q. Those things on your fingernails are cuticles and the backless chair is a curl. And one last rhyme will do it for our extra bonus round. It's called things you have because you're so special. Curly, curly cues in your hair, cute cuticles on your nails. A curious curl without a back and a curricle, not just a hack. And now let's go look at the leaderboard and see who our final big winner is for our extra bonus round. Feeling the puffies may show strong again. Oh no, Mrs. Puffy's letting the side die. <laughs> but, but, but Puffy, the original Puffy is still doing well, but Charlotte has pipped Puffy to the post. Oh the my. Minute. God, well done, I'm, Charlotte, for bringing the puffy course. I'm, I'm amazed. Charlotte, whoever you are, so impressive. Ann Lister is sending you all the heart emojis. Good for you. Heart Thank emojis you. and a fabulous summit carabiner. Well, that wraps up our bonus round of vocabularizing with Ann. Thanks so much for playing. And don't forget to join us for our last round of this at this year's summit just a little bit later today. Bye.